Alright guys, we're at the Overland Expo Pacific Northwest and I'm over here with Skinny Guy Campers because this is a, uh, you know, we've I think we've all seen these around a little bit, but they are just a super cool use of, of space. You can get these for mid-size trucks, full-size trucks, and now they have trailers available. So I'm going to let Jason explain everything that these trailers and uh, these campers have to offer. He's the expert, so I'll let him take us through this. So my name is Jason. I'm the one of the owners and CEO of Skinny Guy Campers. Um, behind us is our model <coughs> 6.5. Um, this is actually a prototype product that we've just come out with. Uh, we did start the company as just truck bed campers, but we're now pivoting into another product line. We're still continuing with our existing, but this is a new product line for us. This is codenamed uh, Tow V2. So we haven't nailed down a name yet, but we've partnered up with X Venture Trailers, and they make an XV2 and an XV3. This is their XV2 trailer, uh, and we married it up with a uh, Skinny Guy Camper Model 6.5. This Skinny Guy Camper is built out with a uh, uh, the skinny, I'm sorry, the kit and caboodle trim package, and also the Primo Lou. So we have two different levels of toilets. One is the base. Uh, every every skinny eye camper has a toilet, which is one of our best features. It's always going to be located in the same location. Um, and then if you upgrade to the Primo Lou, you get a black tank with, and this one has a 30 gallon tank, black tank um, with a permanent installed toilet. So. My wife loves the fact that these have a toilet, and I designed it. We designed it partly because of that, yeah. just because we know uh, that's just a very important feature, especially to having the privacy of your camper. Right. So, <clears throat> our products are built with an eighth-inch aluminum skin. Interior cabinets are also eighth-inch aluminum, so it's very thick. Uh, but it, we built it out of aluminum because it's very light. When designed right, it's it's a very strong product. So. Um, as far as features go, we've got about seven different patented features. I won't go through all of them, but a couple of notable ones um, right here behind me <clears throat> is a jack port. So most truck campers have a jack system permanently installed. We've designed ours to detach. Cool. So that when you put it on the truck, you detach, and there's, there's two on this side, and there's one port on the other side. There's future features or accessories that we'll sell with the campers to make it easier to detach from the truck. But right now, the way to detach is inst install those and lift it up and off the truck. Um, <clears throat> as far as the entrance go, we do a side entry. A lot of the products in this class are rear entry through the tailgate. Um, but most of those do not have the floor inside like we have. Uh, so, <clears throat> so you have to enter in through the tailgate. Another patented feature we have is on our roof over here, and I'll show you that now. So if you feel in here, there's a, actually a gutter. Oh, cool. So, so as you're out in the wilderness, if you are running low on water, you can uh, undo these ports. No way. Hose right into a jug. That's smart. Yeah, so gives you the ability to collect water. Um, one thing you got to make sure of, though, is if you're at camp, no matter where you are, I always detach these, even if you don't have a hose, so just because it doesn't fill up and go into your, your bed, okay. <laughs> which is right inside here. So on the inside, uh, it's it's at least six feet, sometimes six and a half feet inside as far as height goes. Uh, we wanted to make sure that if somebody bought a skinny guy camper, they can stand up inside, right. pull their pants up, yeah. instead of having to lay down like a rooftop yep. and do that. So that's a beautiful feature. Uh, essentially, this product, my background, <clears throat> It, I come from the RV industry, but I love going, I always love going backpacking. I always tried, always tried to figure out at my family's former business, how could we build something super small, super tough? And that's why we came up with Skinny Guy Camper. Uh, but it has everything in it that an RV has, except for air conditioning. So it has heat, the capability of having heat, has a water heater, has a toilet, has a kitchen, has a sink, internal shower, um, a lot of water storage. This has 30 gallons of water on board. Um, also the black tank like we talked about yeah. with the with a primo Lou toilet option. So and then if you go to the back here <clears throat> underneath the uh, camper I like to take I like to bring a lot of gear with me when I go on my trip. So I wanted to be able to have either a drawer system installed underneath the camper mm -hmm. um, or I just wanted to I still wanted to have a lot of room left in the truck bed for uh, for storage. Right. For yeah, whatever it's got a ton bike of storage. Or, yeah. Yeah, so, so you can fit all sorts of stuff underneath your camper even. So, I mean, like, I'm not familiar with the deck systems, but it looks like... It will fit. That's crazy. Yeah, it'll fit. We designed around the deck, and we designed around truck vault drawers. Wow. So um, we haven't determined yet, with because this is a prototype, prototype trailer, um, these these lips on the X, XV2 come out a little bit more um, than into the into the bed area. So the, we're not sure if a drawer system could be installed in here, but okay. we know of several 
uh, drawer, drawer manufacturers that could could customize to this to size. So for this trailer setup, if somebody were to buy this and then decide they don't like the trailer thing but they want to keep their camper, can this camper go back into mm -hmm. their truck? It is yeah. the same exact thing. Okay. It, it, as long as they have the right size truck. The right size truck. Okay. So this is a model six and a half. And at the moment, we're only going to design trailers. Oh, I'm sorry, we're only going to design a, a, a towable product that works with the XV2 and the Skinny Guy 6.5. Okay. So, and our, our models are all named according to the length of the truck beds. Okay. So we start at model 4.5 all the way to a model 8.0, and then in between we have a 5.0, we have a 5.0 GLR. GLR stands for Gladiator, so it's specific for the Jeep Gladiator. Five and a half, which is what this one is for a five and a half foot bed. A 6.0, which is a long bed Tacoma or any any other midsize truck. And then we then this 6.5 and then an 8.0, which is this 6.5 with a, a foot and a half long storage box in the front. Okay. Which occupies that extra space that a long bed uh, full size truck would have. So what kind of weight is something like this in like a five foot truck? In a five foot truck, this this will range. I don't have the exact specs with me, but um, it'll be let's say for the for so we got three trim levels: um, skin and bones, skinny fat, and uh, kit and caboodle. The skin and bones empty, without any water or anything in it, that'll weigh about 450 to 500 pounds. Wow. Okay. Roughly on a 5.0. Uh, all the way up to 800 pounds uh, for the kit and caboodle okay. with all the features and everything in it. So once you start adding appliances and other yeah, of course. things like that, it, it adds Stacks up fast. a amount of weight. So, but the structure, uh, again, we built it out of aluminum because we like aluminum, it's very light, uh, but we built it out of a thickness that is gonna be fairly yeah. stout. So. Cool. And yep. then, um, is that our is that the heat access? This is actually our uh, propane storage compartment. Oh, cool! So this is where your propane, 20 pound propane. It's a horizontal tank. Um, so this is then plumbed uh, up to the cooktop, also to the the Truma Combi heater and water heater combo cool. unit. Um, and then you also have a port that can come out here, so you can cook. Uh, using a, a grill of some kind on your, on wow, your back tailgate. That's awesome. So on a full-size truck, when the 6.5 is on here, this generally is high enough to where you can stand underneath it's it. It's like an it, awning? It's kind of like an awning. Yeah, so, we'll check that one up out here yep, in a minute. Yep. The other thing, too, on a kit and caboodle, um, we add a solar panel and a, a Red Arc Manager 30. Oh, okay. So, um, then the solar, the solar panel is 190 watt. Um, it runs, the energy goes right into the, the Red Arc. And then uh, we don't include a battery because mm. we never know what kind of battery a customer yeah. wants. So we just let them pick. Um, but we then, it just has to be programmed. But anyways, you have a solar panel too. Okay. So, we, and we designed our solar panel system to where when the roof is shut, the solar panel does point up right. in travel mode. But then when you fold open the roof, you can flip out the solar so oh, that you get okay. charged as well while you're at camp. Okay, yeah, I was wondering about that. Yeah. A lot of people look at it and they say, oh, it slides out. It, it doesn't slide out. It actually just hinges out. The support bars next to it slide out to support the solar panel well in the done. opposition. So okay. the bed has, um, we've tested it to 1,200 pounds. It has 600 pounds. We rate it to 600 pounds. Okay. So um, it's very strong. Uh, we don't believe it, ever, it will ever fail. Um, we could be wrong. But we've done our testing yeah. to know it, it. 600 pounds is good capacity. So. Okay. And what size bed is this? This one is. Uh, I wouldn't say it's right around 78 inches. Long. Okay. So, uh, fairly tall individual could could sleep in there. And then width wise, width wise, um, man, you're really testing me. <laughs> Sorry. No, uh, I don't remember the exact. I just it's wider it's, than like a rooftop tent. It's or at least yeah. our alu cab is. So this will sit um, the sidewall will sit in line with the cab of the truck. Okay. So we'll just say that. So but it'll fit It'll fit in any, like w what we've done in our engineering work ahead of building the products, we've made sure and we've designed the box around all the measurements okay. we've taken for the last three generations of trucks with that bed size. So okay. if you have a 2001 Ford Ranger, our Model 5 will fit that. Okay. Um, do you guys have any sort of uh, idea on pricing on this yet? The trailer um, yeah. will probably end up being around retail price. I want to say roughly fifty thousand. Okay, is where we're going to be, which is really fair so. for for what you're getting out of this, yeah. especially um, with if you did change up to a truck, mm -hmm. you're not. I mean, obviously, 
um, you'd have to resell the trailer or just keep the trailer or something else, but you can mm -hmm. put this into a truck, which is a cool feature. Mm -hmm. I think that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the pricing and if you've ever, if, if you've ever explored, if any customer's ever explored the, the Expenture trailer pricing, yeah. I mean, you'll understand the quality that goes into this trailer. Right. Uh, we started conversations with them last August. We ended up dialing th things in last the last Overland Expo. Um, but this thing, this this trailer is bomber. I mean, it's military grade. They make them in Wisconsin. Everything is laser cut, just like our, our product is. Um, theirs is also aluminum. We just felt like it was a good, really good marriage right. uh, between our two brands. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Expensive trailer. Yeah. But when you marry this up. Okay. I mean, we're, we're not the cheapest either, but yeah. it's really well but built it's product. So, yeah. I mean, if you want a high quality, total product, they can still use this on a, on a separately, separately on a truck. Awesome. Okay. And we're going to come out with different iterations of this as well. Yeah. Um, we're just starting here. So, but I can see us getting into a couple other iterations of this product, potentially with this box in the front <coughs> with a flatbed in the back, for example. Cool. Um, so you can bring along a toy, CT, yeah, yep. toys, whatever. So, yeah. And then, is this water? Or it's not. That's actually a. That's the second time I've been asked that. So it makes me wonder we, if we should change this up a little bit. This is actually for uh, like if you need to strap something. This it's a. Oh, a, okay. It's a, a connection point for a strap. Okay, for sure. And, okay, so how is this thing in the wind? <clears throat> Yeah, so the, it's actually performs quite well in the wind. It is noisy because any any tent is going, right. going to be. Um, the material that we've chosen to use is a uh, it's called Aqualon. And in my former life in the RV industry, when we built pop ups, um, <clears throat> pop up campers, towable, um, we used two materials: ABC vinyl and Aqualon. Aqualon by far was the better of the two. Okay. We like it because if you get a, if you do get a hole or a tear, it's very difficult to tear it further. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's. It essentially, it's a, sort of a ripstop type material. Okay. So, and then I see that you have this isn't just a pop top sort of thing. It's also got the cable system that looks like it's giving it a little bit of rigidity it is. for the wind situation. Yeah. It, and the cables are there um, because when the roof is down, or when the roof is right. yeah, mainly when the roof is down, um, the cables are at such lengths where you lift when the roof is lifted. The next, the next bow will will lift itself with the cable. Oh, okay. So it's sort of a self-deploying. It is a self-deploying tent. Oh, it is. Yeah. Does it put itself away as well? Uh, yeah. Yep. I mean, when you when you shut it, everything collapses down. You got to unsnap here. You got to detension the middle bow. But other than that, it's just some stuffing. So as you collapse to, the roof. to fold it over, do you have like a pole that you need to use? We do. Yeah, we have okay. a, a push rod that connects here. Okay. So we we've tried very hard to make um, this a very aerodynamic and easy to set up and take down product. Right. So our uh, pole is right here. Okay. So this is kind of a unique design because it's a prototype. Um, yeah, it just hooks into there and you would undo, usually what I do is undo these. Actually, I undo that one first, come over here, undo this, lay it, well actually undo the top here, lay those down, and then at that point you can lift this up and over. Okay. It's just easy quick disconnect. So after you own one of these and you're used to setting it up and taking it down, what would you say the setup and takedown times are roughly? Yeah, setup and takedown time, just getting this open, yeah. getting the supports in place, five minutes. Okay, wow. Yeah, ladder, but when it comes to the gear that you bring along and getting everything in the right spot, right. that's where the time is really spent. Okay. So, but getting this thing opened up and at camp, I mean, five minutes. And so what kind of a water tank does this have? What size water tank? So it depends on the trim level. Um, but on the, uh, the the top two trims, trim levels, uh, which are skinny fat, kin caboodle, uh, this one is going to have roughly a 30 gallon fresh water wow. tank. Okay. So a lot of water in this in the six and a half foot model. Okay. Each model differs a little bit because right. size is a little bit smaller. So. Okay. And then you have an internal port, and these do have a shower on the inside. Correct? Doesn't have a shower enclosure, but it has this shower hose. Okay, that and you can you can and it drains out, so you can you can if you're when you're care, if you're careful, you can take a shower inside. Okay. Usually, what I do is more or less a sponge bath. Right. If I need to clean up. Okay. So yeah. And then that will connect. Oh, okay, I see. That's awesome. Yeah. And so on the trailers, this whole setup right here, this is how it comes with this burner. It, it'll be real similar to that. Okay. Um, the appliances may differ. Um, uh, but we like the idea of having a, a sink. Yeah, definitely. We like the idea of having a pull-out cooktop um, and a front storage compartment like this. Okay. So 
This is the stock uh, system that comes from Xventure. We're probably going to change that up a little bit. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, we have a lot of manufacturing capability local to us in Indiana, and uh, we, we think we can refine that a little bit differently to make it a little bit more aerodynamic okay. and uh, a little bit more feature packed. All right. And do you mind uh, if we go over by the, the truck a little bit and yeah, just check sure. this model out? Because yep. I know, I know it'll it'll vary what people are looking for. Sure. So, um, as far as like this is a six and a half foot bed, I assume, or is yep. this okay? This is actually a five and a half foot bed. Oh, yeah. this is one of our uh, customers' Sorry, trucks. Right. This is Colin actually right behind it. Okay. This is his truck. Uh, so cool story about. Cullen. Cullen lives in Chicago, and this is one of our, our one of our greatest design features. His truck, he parks it every day in a seven foot tall garage. Wow. Basement, storage, or not storage, uh, garage in Chicago. Everything fits. So how much does a five a five five like this cost? This one is going to be thirty two, I believe. Okay. Thirty two, roughly. So the, the the retail price on a the right. uh, the retail price on a kit and caboodle without the Primo Lou is twenty nine five. Add the Primo Lou, it's about two grand more. Tax wise, just depends on the state yeah. you buy it from. So you're getting for the for the bed space, you're getting about the same. Well, you're getting the same features for sure, but you're mm -hmm. also getting the same amount of living space, if not more, than like a flatbed type of camper because you guys have an eleva elevated floor. Yep, it's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, that's the one thing that is, it's it, it's there's a lot of explaining that goes into where the floor is located because a lot of people think, well, the floor is the bottom of the truck bed. Well, it's not because yeah. it sits on the top of the uh, the truck bed rails, which is great because so. then you have all that space. Mm -hmm. This one actually, being that it, even though it's a model 5.5, has more floor space than the model 6.5 oh. and it's mainly because the front cabinet in here is only about this wide and then there's a shelf that folds in and out that's what this is cool where the kitchen and the sink are located and it just frees up a little bit more yeah. more space as we got better at designing these products this was one of our the I think this was the third model we designed <clears throat> we wanted to move as much weight as we could forward so all of our electronics and batteries are in this front compartment. Okay. We've moved tanks forward more, mainly to try to get the weight over the axle because it's better to have the weight as much as you can over the axle or forward of. Okay. So that you're not passed and then you're not getting porpoising as much. Right. If it's uh, behind there, so. Right. Weight balancing is important on the full-size trucks, but not quite as essential as it is on, right. on the smaller half tons and yeah. mid-size. Awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah, these things are beautiful. They're complicated, but yeah, they're pretty awesome once yeah, you realize well, what it is. You get a lot for how it works. such a little bit, a little amount of space, and you're capitalizing on not having to worry about the wheel wells and stuff like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a lot of space that you're gaining there. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good idea. Thank you. Yep. Got an external water fill. I didn't really point out any of the ports on the, the sides, but external water fill. These are all of these are located on the other side of, of okay. the six and a half, but. We had to go with them on the, the driver's side on this one. So fresh water port, this is actually where you would uh, run out your gray tank from the sink right. if you wanted to collect it. Cool. Or if you didn't need to collect it, you could run it run it out. Um, yeah. The back of this is a little bit different than the six and a half. I okay. can show you that if you'd like. Okay, yeah, let's check okay. that out real quick. Watch your head here. Okay. So the back, you're good. You're fine, you're, you're fine, good, man. You're good, you're <laughs> good. Sorry. Yeah. So, Oh, wow. This was really cool what um, our local shop, High Ground Outfitters, did uh, for Colin. They, they relocated his rear camera feed from the back of his cab to the back of the That's camper nice. so, so he can still see what's behind him. Uh, propane tank is right here. So this is uh, where the propane is located. Just lift that up and it actually slides off, just like the entry door. Okay. Um, these are two storage compartments that are lockable. Um, those are actually where our, our winch is located that holds down the camper. Nice. So the way that we tie the camper to the yeah. truck <clears throat> is winches, winch rope runs in and out of the frame all the way to the front, and then there's four points of, of, of fastening down to the truck bed. We also have a, a framing system that goes on the side walls, tops, tops of the, the truck bed rails that go in with some pins that interline with, with mm -hmm. those rails. Uh, so that keeps the camper aligned. And then these just serve to pull the camper down. Okay. So on the back, you have your macerator drain, which is what comes from the toilet. Okay. You know what a macerator is? Nope. So think of a garbage disposal. Okay. But for your black tank. Gotcha. So if you hit that, it would turn it on. 
uh, and then you would open this, put a hose on, pull that valve, and then all of your black tank waste would okay. be pumped out through a hose, right. a garden hose. Typical RV uh, black tank drains are really big, yeah. very bulky, very really nasty. So we wanted to consolidate that. This is your floor drain for your shower. This is your uh, freshwater intake port if you wanted to pump water in through a pressurized nice. way there, winterization system. Um, and then your, your battery readout with a USB right there. Okay, and the winterization system, what, what exactly, how does that function? So in, in the cold weather climates, like we have in the Midwest and, and north, north mm -hmm. of there in the Northwest, um, this allows you to drain out all the fresh water from all your lines and your, your water heater and <clears throat> your water pumps and all of that. Right. So you want to do that just to make sure everything doesn't, if, it free, if the water freezes, it doesn't yeah. bust your okay. appliances. So it's just basically one big drain system. Yeah. Okay. And you don't have to worry about any of this if you get our, our skin and bones trim level because it doesn't come with any water or any plumbing or okay. anything like that. So if somebody doesn't want to mess with that, I'm more of a simple guy. Yeah. I prefer our more entry level stuff just because I don't like to yeah, yeah. Right. mess with all that. I'll just bring along my water tank and yeah. just use my Dometic faucet or whatever. But but yeah, um, but this, this is, I mean, when you have all this and you use it like like I have, yeah. it's hard to go without it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, especially the Primo Lou. The Primo Lou's, I only used the Primo Lou for the first time uh, on a longer trip about a month ago. Prior to that, I was using porta potties and those were awesome because they're small, compact. Yeah. But having that extra capacity is pretty nice. So. And this is just so cool that he can fit his drawers in down here and have all that extra. Mm -hmm. That is pretty cool, man. Yep. Not a very good trailer there. It's a good design. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. We're on the inside of the uh, trailer camper, and this you said again is the six or six five. Six five. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So this one's got a little bit more room. So I just wanted to go over some of the interior features. Mm -hmm. um, now I guess you can explain what what model this one is because this is a different trailer than the one we were just looking at. Yeah, it's actually the identical uh, Skinny Guy camper model okay. um, in the same trailer. Uh, this is a more updated version of the 6.5. That's a, a little bit older version that we were on before, but, but yeah. Um, toilet location is right here. Cool. So, so it just flips up really easy. Folds up. There's your uh, wow. your Primo Lou. Um, super nice. Hand flush in the back and uh, very easy to use. In fact, um, one of our co-founders, Donovan, <clears throat> swears by bidets. He actually mounted a bidet to oh, really? one, one of his. Yeah, so, but yeah, it's pretty cool what, what can be done with that. That is cool. This is a storage compartment. Uh, so this, this would be good for uh, like sleeping bags and clothing and just odds and ends. Okay. Um, the piping that's in here is is part of our uh, Truma vent pi uh, mm -hmm. ducting. So that actually du ducts, pardon that. I've heard uh, nothing but good about those systems. Yeah, they're the bomber. Um, this is one of those ducts over here. So it's cool because you can close them out or you can direct them to different, different directions. Very nice. We've done a couple uh, trips in cold weather and man, some of the people that were with us, the videographers and mm -hmm. photographers, all they had was a tent and some of them didn't have a sleeping bag and we're like, guys, this is, it's in the teens. Yeah. You're gonna freeze your butt. And then we, then we leave this on while we're out eating and come back in and it's nice and toasty. Yeah, so, okay. So it does retain heat pretty well. It does, okay. yeah. Donovan's actually been down to negative 16 camping wow. in this, doing some ice fishing. And uh, he's been able to keep this temperature at like 60 wow. degrees in here. That's crazy. Obviously it takes a lot of gas mm -hmm. and, you get, and you got a 20 pound tank, but he's probably been able to run it at that temp for about two to three days. Cool. So yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And then so, more storage over here? Yeah, the one to your left is is uh, just more storage. Okay. Um, the one right behind you is our, our electrical compartment. And again, this was the first model that we designed. So you gotta move the refrigerator no, it's all, just it's, a little bit to get in there. But yeah, this is our electrical uh, compartment. So Red there's arc? our inverter, awesome. Red Arc Manager 30, spot for the battery. Okay. So everything's prepped to accept the battery. We just, again, don't install a battery because we never know what the customer wants. Right. Whatever we do, it'll be wrong. So we try to let them let them decide. So single burner cooktop, perfect for making a uh, boiling some water for your pour over in the morning. If you want to, if you're into that, um, or cooking some eggs, single little little sink there. So awesome. Yeah, everything you need to survive. That's perfect. So yeah, wilderness. if you have this in a trailer. Uh, or, or even in your truck. So you have a setup in here if it is nasty out and you want mm -hmm. to do stuff in here, but then also like on the trailer, you have the double burner down there, mm -hmm. inside, outside. Yep. That is pretty sweet. Yeah, in general, like uh, when we're camping, 
uh, we usually camp off the tailgate, have, yeah. a, have, a, have a propane uh, cook top there, cook there, and then every once in a while we'll, I, I use the internal one a lot actually, mornings, uh, sometimes at night, depending on if I'm camping alone yeah. versus in a group. Uh, nice, uh, nice refrigerator, Dometic makes it real nice. This is the CFF 35, this one's actually gone away. We're going to be transitioning to the CFX okay. 35 at some point, which is just the next. It's the, it's their standard model now. Okay. This used to be their standard model. Lots so, of storage yeah. under the sink here. Yeah. For couple your do's and dads. Yep. Couple compartments. I usually put all my plastic bags in here. Uh, dishes, pots and pans. Um, and here, this is actually an inside outside storage compartment. So on the on every other model except for this one, our winch compartment is in the back. Okay. Back there. Our winch on this one is up front. That was the original design <clears throat> that we'd use to hold the camper down. So that winch is in there, but that's a really big outside, inside storage compartment. So you can, if you go to the store, get groceries, without opening everything, you can put groceries in there. Okay. And then pull them out when you're when you're uh, here at camp. Also. That is awesome. Then you got a little bit of pantry storage here, some spices and... It's I'm a lot of space. It's a lot I'm, of storage space. I'm big into spices, so this is packed. Spice rack. In my personal one, so yeah. That is cool, man. Yeah, salts, spices, paprika, whatever. Again, good job. Thanks. There's no space wasted in here. And the fact that you have space under this for more storage is crazy to me. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of storage underneath. It doesn't feel like with this being in the back of it, I mean, I know we're on the camper or the trailer version, but it doesn't feel like you should have more space below you because this is so much. Mm -hmm. the, the one thing I, I need, I didn't point out <clears throat> on our top two trim levels, you get the, ba the basement compartment, which goes down about, takes up about half of the bed beneath the camper. If you get the skin and bones version, which is our bare bones version, mm -hmm. essentially, that all goes away. So you get that much more storage wow. in your truck okay. bed. So you only lose like two inches, because that's the, that's the height of our internal framing underneath the camper. Okay. You only lose about that much of your truck bed. Wow. The rest of it's all yours. Okay. So yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, wait, let's talk about how it's super hot outside and it feels great in here. Well, yeah, we're standing near the top of it by the sun. We're sweating over here. Oh, that's <laughs> um, good. The crossway, this is, this is our AC system, yeah. Okay. windows. Yeah, so, uh, and those are those are pretty fine screens to keep they all are, the bodies out and no, stuff. Yeah, no CM. It's a no CM screen, and as then, they call it. Um, of course, if if somebody were to experience something crazy and this got messed up or a tree branch fell into mm -hmm. it, I'm sure you can buy a whole new yeah. exterior skin. Yep. Just, yep. Just yeah, the tent's fully replaceable. Cool. Um, it, it, it takes a little bit to get it on and off, but yeah. we do it every day. Yeah. So, yeah, and our dealers know how to do it as well. So we've yeah. got, um, we don't have a dealer in every state yet, but we're getting closer to having a dealer in every cool. state. So trying to get a good support network out there. Yeah, and I know that's not something people would really have to deal with, but if you're investing into something like this, yeah. it's nice for people to know like, oh yeah, I can get this repaired. Definitely. And we're always thinking about and trying to develop new accessories uh, for the camper. For example, uh, not on this tent, but on our newer models um, with a newer version of the tent. Mm -hmm. There's a zipper that goes all the way from over here all the way to the other side at the top mm -hmm. with potential later on to have an awning okay. attached on the outside. Um, features like that. So, right. Okay. Yeah. We'll just continue to innovate. Awesome, what we man. like to do. Yeah, this so, is this yeah. is amazing. So, Thanks. oh, one Thank more you. thing. How much does this trailer weigh? Oh, the trailer, you know, I think it's, I want to say it's right around 1,500 pounds. 1,500 pounds, I think. With the skinny that. guy in it? That's not, oh, that's okay. not with, the, so yeah. So sorry. about 2,000-ish? Yeah. Okay. 2,000 wow. to it's really 2,500. Light, um, yeah, depends on, again, the trim level of, mm -hmm. the, of, the, of the camper piece, but, um, I, yeah, but yeah, combo anywhere from two to twenty five hundred. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, right on, man. So this is amazing. Thank you. Yeah, all stainless steel, all aluminum. When it's collapsed, it sits at the top or about the height of the cab. Okay, so it's very aerodynamic. Right which on. It's really important to us. So yeah. All right, Jason. Okay. Thank you for your Thanks, time. Thanks, Tyler. Appreciate it. As always, thank you so much for watching, and feel free to check out my other adventure off-road and overland related content.